Okay, in this video, we're gonna have a look at something called surds. Um, surds are numbers like the ones that we have here, which are essentially numbers in square roots. Let's have a look at this triangle over here. I've drawn a, a right-angled isosceles triangle and we have a side length of one and one. Now, if we use Pythagoras to work out the hypotenuse of this side, that would tell us that the hypotenuse is the square root of one squared plus one squared. So that hypotenuse is the square root of two, or root two, as we say for short. Now, if you put root two into your calculator, you're gonna get a, a decimal number of 1.4, something, something on it will go, and it will fill your screen. And actually that's an approximation because that number would continue uh, on and on infinitely. Um, it would not stop and it would not repeat. It's known as an irrational number. And because it wouldn't stop, as soon as you write it as an irrational number, as soon as, soon as you write it as a decimal number, you've actually approximated it. So thirds are really useful for one reason, that as when you write root two, it's accurate. It's absolutely correct. You haven't approximated at all. They're useful for another reason in that you can write your answer without the need for a calculator. So they're useful for those two reasons. Let's have a look at this number here, the root of 28. There's a convention with thirds, and that is that the number you write inside the square root uh, sign should be as small as possible. So we need to look, find a way to rewrite the square root of 28 so that the number that we're square rooting is as small as possible. And we do that by finding the factors of 28 and splitting 28 up into those factors. So, we know that 28 equals four times seven. So within this square root, I'm gonna write four times seven. From our rules of indices, we also know that the square root of four times seven equals the square root of four times by the square root of seven. Notice that we've got a square number here, four. So when we take the square root of that, we end up with two times by square root of seven. And to just tidy that up, to write that in third form, we write this as two root seven. We've written that in third form, and we've found the smallest possible number that we could to go inside the square root sign. Now, if we have a look at this example on the other side here, the square root of 48, sometimes you're presented with choices into what pair of factors you split a number up into. So let's have a think of the factors of 48. Well, we've got one, and 48, we've got two and 24, we've got three and 16, we've got four and 12, and we've got six and eight. Okay, there's all our factors. And what we're looking for is a pair of factors that we can split this 48 up into, so that when we rewrite this inside here, we split 48 into two factors. Um, and, well, we could pick any of these, but if you see what happened down here, because we had picked a number which was a square number, four, it actually tied it up really nicely at the end because the square root of four is an integer, two. So if we can find square numbers in here, we know it's gonna tidy up nicely at the end. So let's have a look, where are our square numbers? Uh, we've got one there, 16, and we've got one there, 4, and that's all we have. So within this, uh, within this square root, we're either going to say it's 3 times 16 or 4 times 12, and you could do either one. Remembering that we want the smallest possible number inside the square root is going to lead me to picking 3 times by 16. We'll see why at the end. From our rules of indices, that means that the square root of three times 16 is the square root of three times by the square root of 16. 
which equals root 3 times by 4. And I'm just going to flip that round because the standard convention for thirds would be to write that as 4 root 3. Notice if I had picked the other option, 4 and 12, I would have been able to square root the 4, but the number inside my square root at the end would have ended up being 12. And that's why this pair of factors, where I picked the largest square number, gave me the smallest possible third at the end. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself. But what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.